You are listening to the Arsenal Fan Show on Love Sport Radio with me, Charlie Hawkins. I'm joined in the studio with Gunners Tan, Charlie East and Dave Seeger. For the next hour, we are talking Arsenal and Arsenal only. And there is so much to get into. Obviously, the thriller last week against Liverpool up at Anfield in the League Cup. 5-5, five, five, 10 goals, 3-1 up. 4-2, still couldn't get the job done. Ultimately losing on penalties. Danny Ceballos missing a penalty there that would see Arsenal not qualify for the next round. And then the game against Wolves on the weekend. 1-0 up, couldn't see it out either. 1-1 one, one there. Wolves having 25 shots, which is the most Arsenal have ever conceded at home in the Premier League at the Emirates. That is, of course. So it's not good signs for Arsenal at the minute. Two league wins in nine. I'm starting with all the negatives because this show will turn into a positive, I'm <coughs> sure. Oh, and well, we may have to talk a little bit about the manager because that seems to be growing ever louder. Unai in, Unai out. A certain poll vote that was put out earlier. There were quite some surprising results as a large number of you voted. We'll be talking all about that. But we want to hear from you tonight. So tweet us at Love Sport Radio or call us 0208 70 20 558. Before we talk about the game with Wolves on the weekend, let's quickly touch upon that game. 5-5 up at Liverpool. Charlie... So unlucky. Some great uh, bits of magic from <coughs> Willip. We just spoke about it. It was a great game. Ultimately, not enough to go through, though. It was it was enjoyable going to watch, wasn't it, really? And, really uh, enjoyable. Mm. People say it was a neutral. Uh, We're not neutrals. To, no, no, <laughs> even neutrals. I mean, it wasn't a good game to watch because obviously at the end we lost. And, it was just, and I was gutted we lost. It was a good opportunity to go up there. I know the teams they put out. As soon as I see the two starting line I thought, we've got a chance here. And, mm. I, and I thought, what a good opportunity, no matter all the crap's been going on at the minute. To go and get any win at Anfield, no matter what team you play, would have been good. And it looked like we were going to do it. Even when they come back to 4 or oh, no, here we go. And then Willock got up there and scored that goal. And it looked dead and buried. They were really, Liverpool's crosses were very lazy. They looked knackered. And then, I think it's Saka's for the goal in the end. Mm. Switched off and just sort of laziness. And the crosses come in and the Rigi got time to do that. I was gutted. And as soon as it went to penalties in front of the cop, it was just all written that we were going to lose, wasn't it? Mm. And the, pos- it the positives were <coughs> that the, the, some of the youngsters played very well again. Yeah. But also, mm. I think the big positive we had to take from that is, I mean, I didn't like the substitutions, but as soon as he took Ozil off, I thought he's starting at the weekend. Yeah. Because he played really, really well. Really, Dave? No, Did I you really, straight I, away? Yeah, as soon as, I know, soon yeah. as he took him off, I thought he's going to start Adderera. on the weekend. He took them both he, off. He played, they, played, they both played well, and you thought, <coughs> that was it. You know, that's the rehearsal. What surprised me is that the change in formation. He played Ozil in one formation and then mm. the weekend when it's, we played four two three one at Anfield, which I think should be our go-to yeah. formation. Oh, it's the most it. natural with our squad. And then, you know, come come the weekend, Ozil is indeed starting and then he plays a four four two. Yeah, I was very surprised uh, that Ozil started on the weekend because obviously it was his first appearance at Liverpool yeah. and then he made one on the weekend. Talking about that game, obviously, you said you saw the lineup, thought we got a chance. It was the first game, obviously, after the game with Granit Xhaka yeah. and all what happened now. I wasn't expecting much, but it felt like it, it did give us it a positive, positive for the it weekend. Yeah, positive. Not so much on the defensive side of it, but to go to Anfield, score five goals, Charlie. Did you see a little bit from that team after that first game that you know they are fighting, they were encouraging signs? I, I, think, I think the team are fighting altogether, really, anyway. I think... But Martinelli, it just it, the way the he's younger players are at least. Mm. Younger players, he just his work rate from the front, his tenacity, and he, obviously I know he's young and he's trying to get a place. But he's he, he sort of his sort of running at the front spread for the rest of the team. Even Ozil was getting up pressure in. I mean, mate, the Knowles didn't had the greatest game again. Uh, I don't particularly like him at that front of a three either. I don't think he's very good in it. But I just thought we looked. You no know, one else was really nice watching the game in Ovar. I know, oh, I know we laugh so about it, low, but so the Torreira's goal and I know mm. it was a little bit offside, mm. and maybe the penalty maybe wasn't a penalty for them, but it was just nice not having to worry about. Oh, hold on a second, let's go and check it. It just it was just a nice natural game. And it was much better for to watch it, I thought. Also, a small positive, I don't know if you saw it, there was a lovely moment when we, uh, this sounds weird, when we Liverpool went through on penalties where Tierney, Tierney all the Arsenal yes. players went to walk like off Tierney, it. really and got them all together and <clears throat> just thought for a player that's only recently signed for Arsenal, yep. already, you know, becoming a leader, trying to get the boys around, you know, let's, let's stay good. in this. You want that. That's exactly what you want to see from your new man, we've, don't we've you, We've got Dave? a left-back and a right-back vying for future captaincy. Yeah, because Bellerin Bellerin's the doing the old tracksuit thing before the game with the mascots. And went to the crowd Afterwards, I'm all he? for it. Yeah. I'm all for it. I like all yeah. that. I think some of the shows you want, as a football fan, mm. all you want really are players to care, mm. to show a bit of passion, to show a bit of a bit of love. What you do, and mm. that's all you really ask as a football fan, really. And that's why, as long as someone gives it their all, you don't mind. I never see like Nicholas Bentner, rubbish, really, because he give it all. 
No, but he did. He gave it his all. That's a bit of left field mm. one, then. <laughs> yeah, really. No. I won't even say that English Benter gave it his no, all. No, but it was, it was always not a fan favourite, but it always, got, it always got a bit of a good ride from the fans, I thought. No, I liked it. I liked yeah, because he was a bit of a... Don't mm. really give it. He was sort of what you see is what you got. He weren't that good. We knew he weren't that good. I t- can't take anyone seriously once you yeah, change their the, shirt number to fifty-two yeah. or whatever yeah, it was. Because you get fifty-two grand a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of a Dave. Well, going back to the Bellerin thing though, because obviously last week you know we, you were pointing out, which I hadn't really noticed, that he was sort of blowing out of his posterior um, against Victoria. He got through ninety minutes against yeah. Liverpool quite well actually, didn't he? Which is well, obviously he didn't play him at the weekend, but get you think therefore, hopefully in the big one, which we'll preview later in the show, maybe Bellerin will start. He was always behind Tierney in the yes, pick yeah, up absolutely, for coming yeah. back rehab wise anyway, had worse injury and it was longer mm. for him to get back. And I think when they were training together, people were thinking, oh they'd come back at the same time. Mm. But he was always behind anyway. So as you said, Dave, hopefully he might not. He might because Chambers to be fair done all right. Yeah. But he might give Bellerin yeah, another two weeks. It's going to be a must-win game. With the international break and so on, he might give him that extra... But who knows? Like I said, we will preview Leicester later on. That is massive. It's massive. There is a game, of of course, on Wednesday at the earlier time, 3.50 uh, against Vittoria in Portugal. But the game on Saturday is huge. Leicester away. We'll do a full preview of that one. Let's talk a little bit about Wolves now on the weekend because, as I said earlier, 25 shots at home in a Premier League for the first time ever in the Emirates. We went 1-0 up. I think that flattered us at the start because I think Wolves had a very good start. Dave's already laughing. Well, I've just seen Emery in the post-match press conference we didn't give up many chances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's actually a record. <laughs> <laughs> it is a record. <laughs> it may not be clear cut chance. I know, I know but it. Leno made one save in the first half, remember? Mm. With, a, with a big big right hand. One went over, which I think. If you he can't said, see, Charlie, he's visualising that just okay. so you know that big <laughs> right hand is now. <laughs> Get on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we are streaming that, is right, Dave. Um, and then, yeah, the one just went over. Uh, the one we made. And the one they scored, I don't really remember many clear cut opportunities. I thought, oh, mm. yeah, but if we're letting them have chances from the edge of the box, we still shouldn't be doing that at home. I mean, mm. if they've had 25 efforts, okay, they may not be on target, they're not the best side. If that was a good side, we might have yeah. lost four, and, we and might have lost four thing five, is, as Dave we? says, Charlie, I know they weren't clear cut, but this is what, a month after Watford had 31 chances against them on the edge of the box. As a football manager, I'm not saying that Emery does set up for this, but as a football manager, if you can defend and contain someone 30 yards out to have a pop and then miles off wide, because it wasn't 31 shots on target. Mm. Think target, that's six. Mm. There weren't many shots on target. If you can contain people to shoot from 30 yards out, that's good defending, really. I mean, if you can, if you, 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 you need something special to beat your goalkeeper. Mm. The goal we conceded was very <sighs> just basic again, wasn't it? Yeah. It was ball over the top, chain was caught underneath it. Mm. Jimenez is always, he's a big lump, Jimenez, isn't he? he was up Danny Ceballos of... switched off completely to their goal. <laughs> yeah. Starting to worry about him, actually. Yeah, yeah. What, what is going such, on there, such Dave? Such high hopes of him, but uh, well, I think I think it's confidence. I but mean, where, he, talk, he talks like my manager got confident, confidence in me. He made me feel welcome. I feel like I'm part of it. But he, he hasn't started as many games as he know probably his best thought. Position, does he? Well, I don't think Emery knows. No one knows well, Emery, I think Emery. I think most of the fans know his best position. I'm just not sure his manager does. But that's worrying because <laughs> you, you, you've mentioned his confidence on the last couple of shows, Dave. Where would he have lost his confidence? Where do you think that's come from? Why? Well, because why, cause he it, seems to thrive well, on, I think on something he's, like I that. I think so far this season he has. He's been asked to play wide left. He's been played central midfield, sort of playmaker at 10. He's been played mm. central midfield in a pair. And he's now been played left in a diamond. So he's probably played four different positions in, what, 13 games? Some of which he started, some of which he hasn't. I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I would think any player in a new club would want to know their role and know they've got a chance to get used to that role. Mm. I'm guessing that's why he's not playing as well as we know he can, because we've seen it at Real Madrid. We've seen it for Spain. He's a quality player. Mm, it's, we've certainly seen it for Spain. Obviously, Real Madrid they loaned him out this year, so they maybe there was they had fears and concerns over him. But he was back in the side this weekend. There's a few players that don't seem to be fully on the ball at the minute. We mentioned it earlier before we went live. Lacazette being one of them. Yeah, is it a fitness thing? We just he can't know. get his momentum at the minute. He just it's even his attitude at the minute off the ball. I see he waves his arms about a lot at the minute. But he seems someone that has always a brilliant <coughs> attitude at Arsenal. Normally, he seems to yeah. love it at Arsenal. No, exactly. it's just, well, you don't win Fans Player of the Year unless you're working hard. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And Especially you just mentioned it. Working off all the club. club, yeah. But I just think, that just even that partnership doesn't seem to be that the no. two are very, you know, brothers, aren't they? But as Dave said before, Dave said before, I do honestly think, I think Emery quite clearly would prefer a Barry down the middle at the two mm. all all day long, and with Martinelli playing as well as he is, mm. he's got to be careful. Well, I, mean, I wrote, I wrote about this before Lacazette came back, and I was pilloried by in the comments and on Twitter. Because I said four two three one, and he's going to have to rotate. Because I don't want a Bamiyang playing out on the left. Simple, no, simple as. No. You know, I don't. And he, if you, if you, I know you don't agree, Charlie, but I think 
you know, <laughs> there's only one. There's only one. Comp- there's, there's only one person who's winning the best player out of those two through the middle for me. He's you know, Aubameyang is that man. He's been he's been scoring thirty goals a season for seven years. Mm. Lacazette's not Lacazette's not done that without penalties anywhere, and that was in France. So yeah. he, you know, he's definitely the class act, and he can't play wide. Aubameyang gets forced out to play wide, and it doesn't help the team. I think Martinelli, as Charlie said, is really pushing for a, a start as a wide striker, no, which I is do where he said that. he wants to play. And I I, I do like. I mean, I don't know what formation it would work, but. I mean, the way Liverpool play with Firmino, with Mane and Salah mm. coming over the side, you'd like to think on paper, with Lacazette, Aubameyang, Pepe, you could play the same sort of thing. We haven't really... Particularly when you've got the fullbacks coming back. But Lacazette back. hasn't been used yet as dropping in yet, does he, with the other mm. two coming around and behind? No, I mean, we I, haven't I, done I think that everyone, because well, he hasn't had Be- Bellerin and Tierney and starting, no. mm. that's when he could do that. But the question then is, and a lot of Arsenal fans would debate this, you know, Firmino is... He's really a quality player. Oh, I mean, Lacazette brilliant. does drop and link play. He not as good as, team, not as, good as he hasn't got the same vision that you know that <coughs> flick, that turn that Firmino's. He's really Firmino's a cut, class. He's, so he's a cut above. He? He's a yeah. cut above. Yeah. Well, there, it was a big moment, obviously, for fans certainly on the weekend because there was no Pepe. Were you both surprised to see him? I was surprised he didn't center? come off the bench. Yeah. yeah, I was a bit surprised he came off. The bench. I thought the subs baffled me a bit. Which very, is, very. Bad, I mean, yeah. I've, I, I do. I'm very vocal with the Emery stuff, and I, I'm trying to be positive to the fact of. You know, I'm not I'm not looking at things and being upset as everyone else is. I understand. I'm getting the same concerns. I'm getting the same sort of worries about things. But I'm just not as reactionary saying that we need to sack him and get rid mm. of someone. I think you need to... The guy's taken over the toughest job in football with Paul Alex Ferguson. And I just think he needs to be given the chance to reach his target. First year was a, was, was a given. It was. You can't take Arantz and Wenger and just with that, the crop of players we had... He needs to be given just a little bit of time. Just to, I know the time isn't around in football no more, mm. and if we drop off. But Arsenal, as a board, will look at that, I think, in the top four authority in Champions League football. We've got two options of that. Europa League, top four. Okay. The, the, the guy has won the Europa League three times. right? We've, we've, and last year we got to the final. Okay, granted the final performance is not the greatest. It is what it is. But... He still got us to the final. It's been very, very generous. Not the greatest. No, <laughs> <laughs> he's also been incredibly lucky with the teams <clears throat> outside of the obvious not performing. I mean, like we, you know, we we were awful at the weekend, and you think we're going to drop further down, and then you know, Spurs oh, do what they do. Yeah, Man that's... United lose. Mm. You know, everyone below us, Crystal Palace, obviously they could have gone above us. They lost. You know, no, United, nobody, nobody made any ground on him, barring Bournemouth and Sheffield United. Mm-hmm. Who, who, well, at the end of the day, we shouldn't probably be worried by then. By the end of the mm. season, you know, if, if Spurs and Man United start putting a run together, then you start to get concerned. If we don't pick up, we will so go that, obviously later on. But yeah. Saturdays. Are... Well, that's what I was going to say because one of the teams it's that did win, yeah, was Leicester, and it is Arsenal Leicester on the weekend, and that is a massive fixture. I think Charlie and Dave earlier said it is a must-win game. Of course, it is. But we were just talking about the manager, and I think it's time to get in. Where do you stand on it all? Giving your team a voice. Love Sport Radio. Premier League, Championship, and fan shows. Seven days a week. We've got your team covered. Love Sport. Don't get caught out by rising energy bills this year. Leading price comparison site, a spokesman said, can help you save money in just minutes. Plus, sign up to a spokesman said to get the latest super cheap collective energy deals. These offers are such great value, they aren't even available direct from the energy companies. Savvy customers have saved over £10 million from collective energy deals. Go to a spokesman said.com and you could be saving big money on your bills. With a spokesman said.com. Fighting for you, saving you money. As a parent, you always want to protect your kids, so make sure their vaccinations are up to date. Measles and whooping cough are on the rise and can cause severe illness, but childhood vaccinations can help prevent them. Are your child up to date? Find out more. Search online for NHS vaccinations. You probably think you're pretty good at multitasking behind the wheel. I mean, you have to multitask to drive. So what's wrong with checking your phone? The thing is, your brain simply doesn't work. Even a quick look at the message, the feeling of a quick reply, affects your concentration and makes you less able to react to hazards. If you use a mobile phone while driving, you're four times more likely to crash. Think. Put your phone away. Before you set off on a long journey, remember to check your vehicle. Are your tires correctly inflated? And are the treads deep enough? Have you got enough fuel? Is your oil level right? Checking your vehicle doesn't take long. 
that can prevent a breakdown or accident and save you money. So, before you set off on a long journey, check your tires, fuel, and oil. Highways England, connecting the country. This is Love Sport. Just quickly, have you had enough of extortionate rises when you renew your insurance? You could be saving big money by switching to a cheaper deal. A spokesman said.com compares all the best deals on car and home insurance to find you the one that saves the most cash. Go to a spokesman said.com and start saving money today. With a spokesman said.com, fighting for you, saving you money. You're listening to the Arsenal Fan Show on Love Sport Radio with me, Charlie Hawkins. I'm joined in the studio with Gunners Tan, Charlie East and Dave Seager. Well, we just did a little bit of looking at that game with Liverpool in the League Cup. 5-5, Arsenal ultimately going out on penalties. And then the 1-1 draw with Wolves on the weekend. Another disappointing result for the Gunners. Let's talk about the manager then because so much is being made at the minute. It's dominating all the sports headlines. It is actually growing. Dave mentioned there was a poll on Ask Blog. 60,000 people voted 87% want the manager sacked now if that was an option did you vote what would you have voted have you seen this there's even rumours of players not being clear on these tactics players liking other social media posts about the manager going Lacazette being one I'll bring Charlie he's, he's putting his hand up he's oh, he's so, <laughs> just, yeah. I've just, we've just been tweeted in and as you know Dave when, when <coughs> someone puts their hand up it's only right to go to him so Charlie we've, is uh, we've just been tweeted in I'll go from, and see in the corner from a guy called Abu <laughs> He said, hi, guys, I'm listening to my headphones. I put little ones to bed. I, de- I didn't dare tweet this yesterday, but with the news of Wenger on the Bayern Munich shortlist, would anyone li- like to bring him back for one season? Sorry, I've got up to say no to that, mate. <laughs> well, there is a little bit more, and to prepare for either Arteta or Freddie for next season. So before we get into the poll on Unai, Arteta and Freddie for next season, no, someone's tweeting in not there. For me. I, I mean, completely I, agree. I, I just think we need... I'm not against Unai Emery at the end of the season I'm not but we need to be looking at people now I'm not all about a, re- a, a knee jerk reaction bringing someone in if, it, if if Allegri is available that's the only person I would happily know Emery was in for now well he is available he, I mean, w- w- is he available would he take the job straight away he might want to I don't really want to <laughs> what so you're saying if, if he was ready to go now as of next Monday you would you would say make the change the only manager I would say now for you Okay. Uh, realistically, I'm not going to say obviously I'd rather have Pep, but realistically, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I, mean, but I thought you wanted to give Unai to the end of I the season. I do want to give Unai to, but I wanted Allegri initially. Right. Okay. So, but so I would, I would. That's the one I would compromise with. But I think you should be looking at it. I think I thought I've seen Rafa Benitez pop up, and I think as a short-term solution, if it did to happen, I would, I would happen in. You'd have to take it, a big pay cut. Yeah. What? What? What do you? When we say this short-term solution, what do we want to achieve in that? Because if 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 we're looking short-term, which for me is is the a very un, un- Arsenal way to look is, at things, Freddie why Lundberg don't we keep him? He's completely not the answer Lundberg's for me. No, he's never and managed the people, game in his life. And people, I'll test that the same. I'm seeing people talk about Freddie Lundberg as a. Get mm. out, bring, Listen, I love Lundberg as so a player. I. I dyed my hair red. I remember the <laughs> final. But let's be let's be realistic. He hasn't managed the game. I think it's the hipster trend. We're seeing what's happening with Lampard and Chelsea. Let's think get him that. in. No, I don't think it's that. I think it's because I think it's because that there's an obvious affinity between him and a lot of the players who are probably going to be Arsenal's short term future. I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think if he didn't have the under twenty threes and success last year, and the obvious relationship with Saka with Willock, if he didn't have that, and it was just the fact he's a legend, I don't think you'd be seeing. Who likes bringing them in? Yeah, but he's there. But you can see the way to, they talk about Freddie like that. They, yeah, they play young well, players. You so are, I'm though, just aren't saying they? that's why I think it's been mentioned more than it would have been if he was just <coughs> the under twenty. If he was the under twenty threes manager and wasn't assistant and hadn't had the success he had last season, I don't think if it just be, it'd just be Freddie. I don't think it'd be that. I think it's because there's an obvious relationship with the kids. I That's think maybe why. for you, but I would say the majority of fans go, oh, Freddie Lundberg, he's an Arsenal legend. They want him in. Yeah, they don't even think that. If you're going to go Dave. Arsenal legend, I'd go for Patrick Vieira. He's got far more managing yeah, experience. Yeah, exactly. No, but I wouldn't want Vieira either. No, neither I'm would I. I'm not really a fan of bringing back a legend of some sort because they're, they're destined to fail at some point. Do you know what I mean? It's very old. We've seen it with well, Henri well, and... Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, look at... Well, okay, let's just look across to West London and see that it's going rather well, you know. It, yeah, it, it but can Oli happen. Gunnar Solskjaer went well when he first came in. Look mm. at that now. That's, that's yeah, exactly what I'm saying. We're looking at Chelsea. Look now, you saw the fixtures Solskjaer had. If they, any manager could have won those first six fixtures. Oh, I'm not saying, yeah. I think this Chelsea thing at the moment, everyone's getting all hyped up about Yeah, I agree. End of the season, I think that could be... I'm not saying it's, it's going to stand in good stead, but I wouldn't get too excited about that yet if I was a Chelsea fan. Obviously, enjoy it. But I'm saying I'll, 
well, we, we, we've kind of skipped ahead a little bit because we was going to look at maybe if there was a short-term, a long-term replacement, who could that be? Who would be on our shortlist, <coughs> as it were? Let's stick focus on Unai still because he is the man in charge. There was this big poll. It is growing now, the calls for him to go. We've just had another tweet in. This says, look, I'm not jumping on the... The, the manager at bandwagon, but are continually more and more confused by his team selection. His substitutions are truly baffling. I'm not sure how long he's the, going the to The only get. reason I, I brought up the Ask Blog poll is because it's so big. I mean, oh, Ask yeah. Blog is the largest. I read it every day. And, and it, therefore, it's not like me doing and I've got a couple of thousand votes. This is 60,000 people. So it isn't, it isn't like, a, oh, a flash in the pan. It's not even like a fan TV reaction. It's Ask Blog. There's no leading question there. It's just what would you do? Now, and it gives three balanced options. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Um... But I agree what with that tweet is saying, and, and, and I don't agree with what Charlie's saying because you're saying it's got a project you've got to wait. If the, you if there were signs of progress, most fans would probably agree with you. Nobody was calling for his head at the end of last season, but last season you could see what he was trying to do. This is my issue. I haven't the faintest idea what he's trying to do. He changes formations and players every week. That's yeah. what I have a problem with. But there's I, no consistency I, I, and there's no progress. I just don't want to be a part of these clubs where your second manager are through the season. I just think you need to be given... The geezer's not out of the mix at the minute. It's not like we're, we're sitting above relegation. No, zone I'm not sitting league. here saying firing. I'm saying I can understand why people are saying Oh, that. I can understand why people do it. And I think now it's got to the point where it's gone too far for him, really. It's inevitable. He's not He's not going before the end of the season. That's, people should, that is not happening. With, with, and, and supposedly, is that because of what you know or because you're saying Arsenal are not that club they're not that way inclined it's not happening this season, before in the season Arsenal are not going to exactly manage this season they're not going to while we're in the Europa League this is a new ball though isn't it this is a new Arsenal people believe that as well with uh, Dom Royal as they call him but Emery and Royal are really pleased with the fact that he's bringing for the youth he's brought for the kids mm. they're happy they, the Europa League final they took positive of that Cronkays are not going to sack uh, they're not going to sack him before the end of the season. I don't believe they will either. As long as we're in the Europa League. If there, if there was something happened in the Europa League we went out in the round of 16 or something, maybe. While we're in the Europa League, I'll guarantee you, it's not going to go. I, I, don't, I don't agree with you. I, 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 I agree with you to the point where I, it's obvious we're not going to finish in the top four and then I don't think the Europa League's enough. It's a, it's a lottery. You know, if, if, we're, if we're 20 points adrift of top four by January... But we're not going to be 20 points adrift of top four. Well, if, if any of the teams who, who, who could put a run together do, if we could easily be, Charlie, quite frankly. Okay. Well, we're, already, we're already about 10 points off third, aren't we? You off, know, well, so no, no, eight who, point who's third? I mean, six points. Oh, yeah, 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 six but, points. Yeah. But, well, yeah. that's what I mean. This Saturday is a bit of a... It's huge. It, it's huge. It's huge. It's huge for us. And I think... And I looked at Leicester's fixtures as well after this. They've got a very favourable run. And the other thing which we've got down on the notes here for the show, which is what put, what put pay to Wenger, was... Empty seats. The Cronkies acted on Wenger when they started to see 35, 45, 45,000 people instead of 60,000. It wasn't people. that bad. It Saturday. wasn't that bad, but and you're starting rain. to see. Yeah, but it was the same with Palace, was a lot of empty seats as well. You are starting to see empty seats, and it's the people who are paying the big bucks. It's people in the club level where they're all empty. Mm. Yeah. And so if you start to see real fans not, not, you know, not selling their ticket, ticket, season tickets or not coming, then that's the other factor, Charlie. You can't ignore no, that. But what I would say as well, which is, is a common knowledge... The other Charlie's putting his hand up now. Yeah, so yeah, I should <laughs> let him talk. Go on, Charlie. No, go on, <laughs> go on, go on. Go on, Chaz. I mean, I, I can, I'm, I've been a victim to it. When it is hammer it down at Arsenal... Uh, them front seats do get empty because I'm people go, seeing them. Yeah, I do at all. <laughs> people go, people go sit at the back rows or stand at the back. They generally mm. do. They squeeze in. Uh, that, that way it looks. But it wasn't empty. Saturday. Towards the end, it was. Ten minutes to go, it was. Because people go, go. But it wasn't like it was a... No, I'm not saying it is now, but I'm no. saying it's starting. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, don't worry, I know people now getting really worked up now. And, and I, I understand the frustrations. But the majority of these people are the ones who are so anti-Emory are the ones who either love Wenger or love those. It's like a personal agenda. So I'm really disliking yeah. about it. Yeah. And there is a bit of that, Dave. Yeah, but Dan, that's not me. Not I mean, you. I know I it's mean, not I, you. For oh. me, I, I, I am not, I'm not a fair example either because because of what's happening in my personal life, I just want to go to football and enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm mm. not. <laughs> Quite right. frankly, I'm not enjoying it's match not, day. Mm. You know, I'm yeah, enjoying you, the drink before. I'm enjoying being with friends, but the actual watching the football, I'm not enjoying right no. now. But you say that they're just, you know, fans who are very pro Wenger or pro Urzil. They're also maybe fans that wanted Wenger out. They want Uno out. You just can't please certain no, fans all the time. You, you mentioned. That. Let's talk about the frustrations because whether it was the weather, whether it was the manager, fans staying away on the weekend. I know you said the board worry about it when they see five thousand, ten thousand not Definitely. there. 
it's not just that when they're staying away. It's when those numbers start to grow because, as you mentioned it now, Charlie, it's frustrated toxic, fans yeah. are on the it's rise because we're seeing groups, you know, started off as silly little bits of printed paper, Unai out now, fans maybe working on flags, banners. Is that number, are you seeing it from game to game? Is that growing, I'll, growing? I'll tell you an experience on Saturday, and this is God's honest truth. I was walking out the ground. Is this a Love Sport exclusive? This is a Love Sport exclusive. <laughs> no, I've been on Twitter, actually. <laughs> oh. I was walking out the ground on Saturday, and there's a guy with Unai outside mm. in front of me. And I was... Raging. I grabbed it off him, I ripped it in half, and I threw it. I, I said to him, what are you doing? You're an embarrassment. You want to be on the telly. That's, that's what it's all about. You want to be on telly for a sign. And I said to him, you're an idiot, mate. Mm. I, I ripped the sign out in front of him. He, he was all sort of stuttering. And I would sort of... Things like that. And it's the same with all this Arsenal fan TV lot. It seems like a lot of people feel it's fashionable to be like, oh, I'm at Emery out. Because when he does get eventually go, say, oh, I told you from day one. I told you I know my stuff. A lot of it has become very fashionable. This is social media. But what is the answer, though? I they want know. Unai at. This is the pro. I'm, I'm, because I don't know where I stand here, but this Unai at, for what? For who? Where? Exactly. The, That's what I don't I know. Don't, I don't, and certainly, let, let's bring it up, because we're talking about it now anyway. This Mourinho oh. talk, I absolutely hate it. I mean, this is a man who, you know, hate the way Arsenal. he spoke about Arsenal and Arsenal and Wenger, Wenger. wherever so you stand on Wenger, the way he spoke about it. Now, these, these, are, these are the fans want him in, whether it is a small portion, a small ni- minority, and then they go, we don't know the style under Unai. We don't like the football under Unai. Have you seen a Mourinho side? This is unbelievable. Unbelievable! It's at wh- where are the calls for Jose That's Mourinho? I can't understand it. Yeah, there's there are, there are like just ridiculous. <laughs> he was <laughs> the, says it all. he was the, he was the guest of a Portuguese company in a box. It was nothing to do with the club, and the club have said well, Raul had dinner with him four years ago. So he's not telling a lie. It's saying I had dinner mm. with him, but he had dinner with him four years ago. Yeah. This is Castle is uh, is always Castles, been yeah. Jose's mouthpiece in the press. He, he writes whatever Jose wants to write. Jose wants a job in London. Mm. This is the best job that's likely to be available there. in London. Yeah. West Ham could be available in a couple of weeks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think Jose will go for that. No. <laughs> of course he wants to manage Arsenal. But I tell you what, I was with Chidge yesterday, obviously, on the Fans Forum show. And Sunday, they, 3 they, to 7 they had, exact, <laughs> they had exactly the same situation when Benitez came to Chelsea because they absolutely despised Benitez because that history between Chelsea mm. and Liverpool in, in, in that early you know, Mourinho tenure. And they hated it. Even though they won the Europa League, they hated it. Hated it. They couldn't wait for him to go, and that's what Arsenal fans should feel about Jose Mourinho. And and I agree. I think all three of us are in agreement there. We all f- feel that about him. But there is a minority, even if it is a small one, that say I'm starting to come round to Jose. Oh, we'd bring trophies. Oh, yeah, we'd, I'd win I'd, we'd win tro- We'd be we'd be secure. We'd be stable. Some of them are people Why we not? know quite well. As yeah, well, oh, this no. is the problem. And sometimes, whether it is just a math piece and it's what he's putting out through the middle, sometimes the fans that want him are the fans that are heard. Dave, they're the vocal fans because they are on the Arsenal TV and somewhere else. So, yeah. So, is, is that a worry? Because the fans that do want Mourinho, whether it's not us three or whatever groups we're in, th- the ones that want him are the ones that are maybe heard the most. No, exactly. And but We're but meant to be a team worker. Oh, Can you oh, stop oh, passing oh, notes, you two? Sure, yeah, sure, I want right. to feel part of the team. I thought <laughs> I was the third musketeer. But, 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 What's happening just, here? Just I'm an Arsenal fan. You lodged the United joke. <laughs> I still can't get a look in on this show. <laughs> You're with us, John. Don't worry, mate. You're not a Twitter. It would mean anything to you, mate. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't know He's that. got my number. Text me. <laughs> Sorry, Going back Charlie. to your question about yeah, what please. do we do now? Yeah. Right? A realistic option. And, and mention the names, right? Some people mentioned Freddie to end the season. Personally, I... I, I it's utter nonsense. I couldn't say that. Mourinho Good is safe. definitely a big no-no for me. Okay, I've seen people say about the Ajax manager Ten Hag, mm-hmm. who I like. I think he's a very good manager. I'd happily mm-hmm. take him. He has publicly come out today and said he is not leaving Ajax. He's mm-hmm. there to end the season until mm-hmm. Bayern Munich bump right. up those. Well, he's oh, come out. <laughs> Even look, break your news. Eric Ten Hag says he is staying at Ajax for the rest of the season. Oh, that was like that was like a love sport exclusive. <laughs> there. You got in there before the mainstream. Just come on, over I see it. So honestly, he weren't going nowhere. I said, you think. I wouldn't be surprised if Bayern go and get Marino. He, he, he's, he's not going. He's not going Germany. No, he, Dave's right. He, want, he wants a job in London. He's he's fan, he never even he stayed in a hotel oh, no, for no, two hotel. years at Man United. But, but, he's, but, he's not going to Germany. But straight away, so no Marino. I'm not having Freddie. Oh, Teta's not going to leave Man City at this time. No, so I agree it. with that. Not chance. So why would he want to leave that? Why would he want to leave? We're talking about the options. We want you to tweet your options. He is options. an option down the line, but oh, not I agree now. with that. Option down the line. I, I agree with that. I wouldn't be averse. I'm da- 
I'm definitely not part of the team. They're not even letting me go for a break. We are talking about your <laughs> options. Tweet us at Love Sport Radio or call us 0208 720 558 on the Charlie and Dave Arsenal <laughs> fan show. <laughs> Love Sport. Are you paying way over the odds for your car insurance? The spiralling costs put people off driving full stop. But you're a careful driver and realistically you'll only need an insurance payout if some halfwit cuts you off on the M1. So you shouldn't be forced to pay massive car insurance premiums. And you don't have to. Go to price comparison site a spokesman said dot com today and find out the best value car insurance deals on the market don't pay the price for not shopping around the spokesman said dot com fighting for you saving you money if you see somebody showing any of the signs of a stroke you don't have to think about it you just dial 999 use the fast test f face has their face fallen on one side can they smile a arms can they raise both arms and keep them there s speech is their speech slurred t time time to call 999 if you see any one of these signs act fast make the call dial 999 whoa look how much saturated fat is in these chocolate biscuits it's surprising how much is in our food and drinks for us kids eating too much saturated fat can lead to harmful fat building up inside which we can't see, increasing the risk of heart disease or stroke when we get older. So be food smart. Download the free Change for Life food scanner app and start making healthier choices today. There are many things a mother can pass on to her baby. Her smile, her eye colour and her immunity to whooping cough. Whooping cough is a very dangerous illness for young babies and at the moment it's spreading fast. A simple vaccination during your pregnancy can help to protect your baby in their first weeks. Please speak to your GP, nurse or healthcare professional and pass on your immunity. This is Love Sport. You are listening to the Arsenal Fan Show on Love Sport Radio with me, Charlie Hawkins. I'm joined in the studio with Gunners Tan, Dave Seeger and Charlie East. Well, obviously tonight, a big fixture of the show. We know there is a big fixture on the weekend, Arsenal versus Leicester. What a game that is. But the big fixture of tonight's show is the manager. There are huge numbers and they are growing. And you've been tweeting us as well. And you can tweet at Love Sport Radio or call us. We want to hear from you tonight. Have your say. Do you agree with Charlie? Do you agree with uh, disagree with us? Let us know. 0208 70 20 558. We've had a tweet into the studio and it does agree with what Dave has been saying now because it says, uh, this one from Chris uh, Davison, who we have on the show sometimes and he's tweeted in evening guys, I think one of the main issues are that the, that, that the fans have with Emery is that the fact that they aren't seeing many or any improvements on the pitch performances have been poor, some of the results have been unacceptable this is happening after a bad end to the last campaign. That bad end to the last campaign for some fans uh, I think for you as well Dave, it's it's carried over, hasn't it? And, and you know, those worries, you know, like a bad taste almost, like a bad hangover, it's not quite gone away, has it? Yeah, no, I think we... Well, I mean, I think it did sort of go away because we had such a positive window and everyone got a bit yeah. excited about the new season. And then first game against Newcastle, I'd have taken 1-0 there all day. All Good done, start, mm. solid. Good start. Then, we had, then we had a... You know, we were OK against Burnley. So, you know, two wins, you're thinking... This everyone is positive. thought we were flying. <laughs> um, and then it just, sort of just hasn't really been very consistent since. And it is this... This constant change in formation. I mean, to take, to, let's ju- let's just take the last week, the last weekend as a case in point. You know, he, he is going to start Ozil. I thought so. He does. You see Ozil's playing, and you think this is four two three one, and he plays a diamond. You think, well, I can deal with that if it's a diamond. And Ozil was at the point of the diamond. That's still pretty much Ozil's position. But what was happening was he didn't play Torreira at the base. He played Guendouzi. Torreira was on the right. And he was far more far advanced than Ozil most of the time. And Ozil wasn't getting the ball from anyone else, so he was dropping deep. And if I'm the manager, if I can see that, and I've coached at kids' level, Charlie can see that, he, he coaches at man's football. Mo- most men who watch, or women who watch football every week, can see that. Well, why can't the manager see that? And OK, we can say about the players, and Ozil rightly is coming to get the ball because he's not getting it, but he shouldn't have to because then he's not in the positions we want him. So that's, what I, that's the sort of thing that frustrates me. I, I, I agree, and... and I agree with Chris's tweet. I, I do, mm. and I said, I have to send you off air. <laughs> I'm frustrated as much as everyone else, and there is some things he does. It baffles me. But the substitution on Saturday when mm. he oh. when he took off Torreira and brought on Saka, and I thought to myself, <laughs> why? why? I, I didn't know why he'd done that. Like, I mean, sometimes you think, okay, there's a, there's one substitution and then another one, and so there's a gradual yes, change. But it wasn't it, even like that, was it? That? Surely he wins one all and all. You want Pepe on that pitch? Mm. Surely sitting on the bench mm. doing nothing. 
I don't think, and, I, and I, particularly when he's just got his confidence up after those two goals exactly. as well. And he's t- he takes Lacazette off quite a lot of time, and I can see why because he wants he wants a bang through the middle. Yeah. It's like he starts Lacazette, packs him off after sixty five minutes, and he gets a bang through what he wants. But he had both of them. He had he had two strikers. Didn't I know. He, he played four four two with Diamond. And, and, and but it's, it's, it's frustrating and, and the Ozil stuff. But also, as much as he is getting the stick, Henry. I think the players have got to show a bit of responsibility as well. I really do. Mm. I think we've been quite unfortunate. He has been a little bit unfortunate with the injuries, I think, to start of the season, but he's not had a natural right back and a natural left back. Abu's come back to you. Has he? Yeah. What's Abu said? Yeah. Following Charlie's remark, I wasn't particularly pro Wenger and defo not pro Ozil. Although very respectful of the gentleman or a leave when he left. As for Ozil, I was incensed with his pre contract behaviour. Mostly I've spent the past years lamenting our failure to replace Santi. I you read that perfect point. for radio, by the way. <laughs> Enthusiastic lad. <laughs> you two make fantastic radio. Just cut him off. We're talking player performance. But, uh, he's interesting because Abu's got a point there. Because I think, I, I think, that's I, a I big think point. but we all thought Sabios was that man, didn't we? Yeah, but th- and he Santi's still could be. Miss. Could be. Santi is a man. We've never played Santi as well. Love he was Santi. the one player that year when you were injured, which I'll never forgive. Should have won the league. Yeah. Never forgive for, forgive Wenger for. We were five 0 up against Ludogorets, and he had a knock. Take him off. Yeah. Take him off. He didn't. He got injured. At the end of that game. Like, mm. And look at him now, though. Flying. Yeah. Flying. But, that, but we had um, the guy, I mean, I <coughs> want to get him on the show again, actually. The guy who, from uh, the Spanish correspondent uh, for ESPN, for, for on, you know, David Cartledge, we yeah. had on the show a while yeah. ago. Yeah, he Spanish. told us a lot about Tobias. But he also, if you've probably noticed now, his tweets about Emery. And now there's a thread that he put in May 2018 of everything we should expect about Emery. Yeah. Underachievement, not getting on with oh. big players, changing formations, too many videos. Everything he said, he's like lost at Nostradamus. But he's, he, but he's the same guy who said Tobias is the new centre. He did say that. It, and he, but he needs to play in a two alongside a defensive midfield player. Because the thing that's always touted with, with Unai is that, oh, he's won three uh, Europa Leagues. He won them back to back. Incredible European pedigree. Fantastic that's manager. Like second tier European pedigree. Yeah, I, no, I'm just saying that whenever you people yeah. talk about him, you always hear that mention. Oh, he's a great manager. Let's not forget one of the seasons that he'd done that. Seville didn't win one away league game. They didn't win one game on the road. That is not good for a manager, someone who's managing Seville in La Liga. And Arsenal, you know, we're seeing it sometimes as well. You know, Pochettino's people ne- on for doing that this season. <laughs> yeah, people never, t- I'll take never not talk about that. away game for a great <laughs> league win this year. You take away not winning an away game. I will take winning the Europa League. And, and not, not win, win one away, away game I'll in the Premier League. I'll take a trophy all day long. Yeah, but then that means you, you know, you're really struggling for top four <laughs> and other things if you're not. If no, you're, no, 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 just, that's a bit of a tongue in cheek comment. Mm. But well, let's go back to because players and and how much they should shoulder yeah. the blame, Charlie. I think it's a really big thing. We're seeing attitudes change of some of the players. We mentioned the post they're like <laughs> on social media. How much do they play a part in this? I think. I think firstly, I don't think we're that good, player wise. I think. Our squad's not the greatest. I think it's, it's not a great squad, so to speak. I think you've got. I'm quite happy with Leno. I think Leno does. The mere fact you don't talk about Leno, it means he's doing a good job. Because you mean we've had a, we've had some really bad years of goalkeepers, and I'm quite happy with him. Oh, see, I think we have got a good squad. Do you, do you, We've got a blend of youth and experience that is as good as Man United and Chelsea. And Chelsea are outperforming us. Leicester are outperforming us. I worry about our right and left back position. I think that's such a key position. We've not had them all season. I do agree with Dave on that. I think that I think Come the squad's on, let's very start good. Season, Charlie, been, we were all pretty happy after that. It's been the best it has been in ages. No, no, I agree with you. I don't I was a bit gutted we let Monreal go. Yeah, that no, I was That's a bit of a crazy decision now, looking at the way things have gone and how long it took Tien to get back. Because I'm not having Kalazanich at all. No. I'm not, okay? And he's played the majority of the season. Yeah. Callum Chambers, he's done all right, but he's not a right back. Even that goal Saturday was down to him. It's his fault, ultimately. The goal against Palace. He's had a Rick every game. He has, really. In m- majority, he's had a, a Rick But every he's game. not bringing Maitland-Niles back in, even though he's fit, isn't he? No, he's had, but Maitland-Niles is no good either. No. Do you know what I mean? So that's three players straight away. Socrates, I can't make my mind up. But in one minute, I'm really out of him. Next minute, I'm not, well, I'm not too sure. David Luiz... But you're not a big fan on holding. And that, that's a really surprised me Did last week. Did you see week. him Wednesday night? <laughs> he's, I'm he's, sorry, mate. I've got to defend him. He's Did just coming back from injury. It's a massive night? injury. Did you see him Wednesday night? Yeah, but you're saying you're saying Bellerin's not quite there yet. No, Holding's not no, quite he's there. Not, he's not. No, he was oh, good last year. He had a good, on I like him a lot. I mean, I don't. I don't think he's the answer. I don't. If I you think picked he, up like Frank no, Abreu, no, 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 no. I think he's a great. I think he's a great answer if we've got a top top draw player alongside him. I think with the right partner, he is the answer. I think Luis could play next him. Yeah, I don't think that's. I think that's the first choice. 
in, in, until January. I think we lacked at midfield. Well, just very quickly, we have had a call into the studio. Uh, uh, I believe, Ricky, you've called in. Ricky, you want to talk a little bit about the team and what it's you not Ricky think the man... It's well on Spurs, is it? I, I, I really hope not. Ricky, uh, <laughs> you want to talk about the formation and the team at the minute, don't you? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was just literally about to say what I think Charlie just said there. I would say about playing David Luiz and Torreira in front of uh, Socrates and Holding. So I thought when before Holding got injured last season, I thought he was playing quite well with Socrates. And then obviously having Tierney and Bellerin either side of them. And then Ozil, Pepe, Lacazette and Abandoning up front. Just we did actually talk about David Luiz possibly yeah. playing defensive midfield with Charlie and I on last week's show, actually. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, it's yeah. Definitely, I, I wouldn't go... Yeah, I mean, uh, Luiz and Torreira, right? I mean, you were talking about Chambers playing defensive midfield mm. as well, Charlie, last week. But uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with that formation. But you want four, two, three, one, Ricky, which I think we both do here as well. Yeah, I think it makes makes a lot of sense. I think with Tierney and Bellerin, so you you've got to sort of look at Liverpool and what they're doing with their full yeah. backs. So yeah, yeah. Four, especially. Yeah. Ricky, a big theme of tonight's show has obviously been a manager. We're hearing from all different types of fans. Where do you stand on it? Do you, do you think Unai needs to be given more time? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I, I, do you know what I'd make? We'd like you to be honest. Me, <laughs> yeah, there's a non-stop message with me. He's got to go, he's got to go. And I, I don't know, they've given me the ump. I thought he needs a bit more time. But the only thing that's frustrating me is just, it's, for one, there's massive things he subs, not making any sense. And two, he's just misusing players, I think. I think Torreira's got to play defensive midfielder. I so agree. Uh, we all agree with that. Yeah, yeah Rick, I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating. Ricky, do you not feel, I mean, just hearing you talk there, do you not think that... <laughs> It's, 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 it gets me down all this Unai out stuff. Just the way people, yeah. some people are really driving it too much, and I just get to the point of trying to support can't the be team helping, a can bit it more. Match it can't help no. at all. Do you, what do you think about it? Rick, sometimes, do you, do you, I mean, I don't hear much of it at games. To, to be honest, nah, with you. it's all social media. It's, it's them idiots, Arsenal fans. <laughs> they're, 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 they're giving a platform for all these that don't even bother going at the games. Um, and yeah, it's just yeah, it's just for just once. I mean, that's straight. But my old man's, you know, he's old school Arsenal. He's had a season ticket for years. But even him now, he, he's he's you know he's picking and choosing games now. He just says he's bored. He just lets his ticket go for nothing. I think yeah, that's been years of that now. Now, though, isn't it, Rick? To be fair, yeah, a lot of people are doing that. I mean, I was up at Anfield on Wednesday. I took my my uh, little, little girl and I took uh, my nephew as well for their first games. And as good as good as it was for them, like amazing game to go to. You know, if you're four two up at Anfield, to go and <laughs> to what happened against their under twenty one team was yeah, I don't know. It's just, well it's not like it's, it's the first time we've blown a two goal lead this season, is it? Oh no, I know nothing. At least they're lucky they've not seen the five 0 defeats up there, mate. We've seen a few of them, haven't we? Oh no, I know mate. <laughs> I've left at half-time many a time. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be saying that live on air. <laughs> Ricky, uh, <laughs> how are you feeling ahead of the weekend's game? Because as uh, Charlie and Dave said, it's a must-win game. It is huge. Leicester absolutely flying. Uh, are you feeling confident <laughs> for this one? Not in the slightest. <laughs> I, think they look, I, I, I think they look really good this season, Leicester, um, especially since Brendan Rodgers has been there. So, yeah, I'm not really... I don't know. To go there and get, I mean, the good thing is to go there and get a draw will be a good result. But then... It's, it's not we need a win so yeah. it's not if that makes sense it's, it's, it's an odd one I think I'll be amazed. it's one of them if we, if we win I think we'll get a bit of momentum win a few games everyone will forget about the assembly out stuff it's just, just the way football is nowadays but then if we lose they're going to be straight back on it yeah you couldn't get a bigger win than that to turn the Unai stuff around especially with the way Leicester plan this year Ricky we really appreciate you calling into Cheers, the Rick. studio thanks Rick always good to hear from more Arsenal fans and what they think well we are talking about the Leicester game and we'll be doing a preview of that must win fixture next Giving your team the coverage they deserve. Love Sport Radio. Are you being fobbed off by a company? Are they letting you down? And are your complaints falling on deaf ears? We can help you out. Come to a spokesmansaid.com and we will give you a voice and a platform to raise your complaints. As recommended in the Daily Telegraph, a spokesman said.com. Fighting for you, saving you money. You're in leakage, you're in leakage. You're in leakage, you're in leakage. You're in leakage. You're in leakage, you're in leakage. Tenna men. Cage. Pants and pads. You're discreet. Le- Masculine. <laughs> Your Secure I- absorption zone. Buy online or in shops. You're in- a man. Keep control. You're in? No. Home insurance is vital. You don't want to end up paying through the nose when something goes wrong. But are you being charged way too much for your home cover? 
Are your insurance premiums simply too much to bear? It doesn't have to be that way. A spokesman said.com is a price comparison website that trawls the internet to find the best deal for you. Don't pay the price for not shopping around. Visit a spokesman said.com and start saving today. A spokesman said.com. Fighting for you, saving you money. When your kids are ill, you just want to help them feel better. But you don't always need antibiotics. Get advice from your local pharmacy or search NHS choices. <coughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> Let's face it, when your kids are ill, you'd do anything to help them feel better. But remember, antibiotics aren't always needed. You might not realise it, but taking antibiotics when you don't need them puts you and your family at risk of a longer and more severe illness. Help keep your family well. Always take your doctor's advice on antibiotics. Search NHS Antibiotics. All better. Brilliant, I've finally quit. I can keep up with my kids now. I feel like I've got my life back. It's an amazing feeling when you stop smoking. Experience it for yourself with help from Smoke Free. Our range of free support can help you quit for good. From our app to emails, face-to-face -face and online communities. Search Smoke Free because there's only one you. This is Love Sport. <laughs> You're listening to the Arsenal Fan Show on Love Sport Radio with me, Charlie Hawkins. I'm joined in the studio with Gunners Tan, Charlie East and Dave Seagull. We've been talking about the Wolves game, the Liverpool game, and now it's time for us to turn our attentions to the game on the weekend, which is Leicester. We've obviously been talking about the manager, as all you Arsenal fans are at the minute. We even heard from Ricky just phoning in there. There is still time to phone in tonight. Tweet us at Love Sport Radio or call us 0208 70 20 558. Let's talk about the game on the weekend because it is absolutely huge. Charlie was just talking up the atmosphere. I'm not after the atmosphere. I'm after three points and the W is all we care about. But can we get it? Another fo uh, thing that Dave's mentioned, uh, which is is big tonight, is the formation and the lineup. Dave, how are you predicting Arsenal uh, will turn out in this one? Impossible. <laughs> impossible. You can't, you can't impossible to it. predict what Emery's going to do. I know what I'd like him to do. I know what I think he should do. But uh, what, what what would you like him? And no, what I would, would like him to go back to four. I'd like him to stick with Ozil for the time being and go back to four two three one. And I think what Charlie said earlier makes a lot of sense. I would probably, I would probably go Pepe on the right, Aubameyang on the left, Lacazette in the middle with Martinelli, you know, waiting to come on. And then We've I, got to take the I would go with Torreira and Guendouzi. I wouldn't bring Shaka back, and I would go for it with Bellerin if he doesn't last. 90 minutes, he doesn't last 90 minutes, no. you know. We, it, you know, I would rather Bellerin was saved for Saturday than, and he doesn't play Wednesday. Let Chambers play Wednesday on Maitland Niles and save Bellerin for Saturday. Now, Bellerin, Tierney, uh, and uh, oh, well, I think you'll probably stick with Socrates and Louise, but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem if it was Holding and Louise, but that's my team. I wouldn't have Holding against Vardy yet, just to carry that pace, just because it, it, it doesn't look fit. No, it doesn't, no, no. I wouldn't have that, but I think. We've got to be positive. I quite like the fact we're going up there as underdogs. I like that. I like when we're underdogs. I don't like when we're expected to win. I hate it because I know what we like. We, we bottle it. We're not playing the catch up on a Sunday, which it seems like we've been doing loads lately. Seeing everyone else's results and then we've got to mm. respond. It is a late kick off, though, the up yeah. 5 30 kick off. It is indeed, but United are playing Sunday and things like A lot of people are playing Sunday. I'm looking forward to going up there Saturday because it's always, as I said, it is always a good game, Leicester. And we normally, apart from last year, we normally do all right up there. I mean, last year was a bit of that. that when they won yeah. the league, we were the only team to beat them twice. Beat them twice. Away. We yeah. did beat them twice. But they only lost three somebody games. Somebody said that recently. Sanchez, Sanchez that trick, <laughs> didn't he? Sanchez that trick, yeah. a little bit last minute one. So what a game that was. Oh, well, that, you know what? I remember of the Emirates era. Of the Emirates era, that's the best. That's the best I've ever heard that ground. Mm. But that was, oh, I hit the floor and everything. When Welbeck scored, oh, it I was. I thought we were going to win the league. Yeah, no, then we lost to Swansea on the Tuesday night. I really thought we was going to do it. It was in February. I remember. Yeah, that was Valentine's Day. That was. It wasn't. That was the only the only time it's rivaled. That was the Arshavin against Barcelona. Oh, so no, they yeah. were the two goals where the absolutely. Yeah. If there was a roof, it would have come off. Um, mm. But going back to, and one of the Tottenham ones, a five three. That was quite a five two. One, five two. Don't give them an extra goal, Charlie. <laughs> Crying out loud. Well, but I just think on going on Saturday, as Dave just said, we've got to take the game to them. We're Arsenal Football Club. I know everyone sort of. No one's given us a sniff on Saturday. Every every pundit you see, everyone talking, everyone going, oh, Leicester's been in a good bit of form. We were going to take the game to them. Try and nullify Vardy. I know it's hard on it. And no, I hard. think this is going to be what Emery said. I'd rather win 5 4 than lose. You know, like, the, 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 we won't stop them scoring. No, of course we won't. But we, we've, just, we've we, just got have to go, we just have to score a few. I've, I agree with you. We've got to have that front four of Pepe, right, Lacazette left, a Bamiang through the middle, Ozil on behind. You play Lacazette on the left? Uh, no, I mean, Lacazette through the middle, a Bamiang oh, on right. the left. As we said, interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. and then the two, in, just two sitting there. Kunduji, Torreira sitting next to each other. 
no space for Sabah for me. I wouldn't be in first Chambers or Bellerin, mm. but you need to has got to start for me. And I think if we if we can get an early goal, we, I mean, we just put the game to him. I think come we're also a football club. I know. I think I think we have to play Bellerin because Barnes is quick. When, when you Barnes s- is really quick does on he the start left. For them, yeah, yeah, he has the last few games. He's been starting on the left. Tamari Gray's been coming on, but Barnes mm. has been starting on the left. He's quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, and he worries Harvey me Barnes against pace. He worries me against pace. Uh, Chambers. That's Chambers. why I start Bellerin. Or Niles even, actually, if, if he's not fit, because they're both quicker than Chambers. When you say, because we're all Arsenal fans here, this is the Arsenal fanship, but when you say, we, we've got to take it to them, we're Arsenal Football Club, what does that mean and, it, now, Charlie? Because you said it, do the players know that? It doesn't, it doesn't give them that 10%, because we watch <laughs> no, them. Sometimes we don't see that desire, that fight, that commitment. And you, I don't think Arsenal have got the name of the old days. We've got a fear it factor. It won't change the result, no, does it? We've got to take it to You them. know people used to be scared of Man United? Massively. Used to go out to old traffic, they've oh, already won them up. We got the, they haven't got that. Anymore. We've not got that no more, have we? We haven't. People, mm. If people look at us, think, we haven't had it for 15 oh, no, years. Yeah, people look at us, think, oh, we Hon- get... Honestly, it's the most depressing thing. When I do the opposition fan show for the, for uh, the well, other well, ones, fancy just... it was horrible. Last week on the Palace one, I can't wait to play Arsenal. Can't, we're going to get a result at Emirates. I was like, oh. Every, and they never do it whenever it's the supposed other big four, big six. They go, ooh, don't know. You're in Arsenal, brilliant, can't wait. Home or away. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> there's no fear from any other side there. So when you say we're Arsenal, and I do it as well, no, but no. It's, I think it's a thing that fans do to themselves more to psych your own self up well, for the I game do. on a Saturday. I'm, I'm, yeah. I always try and go into a game positive as possible. I think, can we get a good result? We've got. Bamiang <laughs> scored again last weekend. Scored 50, 50 goals. We haven't as, as I always say, the beauty of football is there's always the next game. Exactly <laughs> that. Exactly. Thankfully, it comes every three days with us. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we we Wednesday it. night. See, on Wednesday night, I played with virtually through on that group. Yeah. Don't take anyone who needs to be playing. Quite excited about a 350 kickoff. Yeah, I'm all right. To be <laughs> get out of work early. Watch that. Lovely. Nice, it? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, that Charlie doesn't work during the day. <laughs> yeah, this is it. I get in here. No notes. I do it all. Yeah, I don't need no notes for you two. You take over. No, exactly. Let's talk about the Victoria game. Yeah, we should talk a little bit about that. But you say we're already through. We're not quite, but we win this one. It would have been obviously four games, four wins, and then we're sailing. And will, will that change things as well? Because then we can play whichever side we want with two games to go. Yeah, but I've, I think we've got to look to Saturdays. We're six points behind them. If we lose on Saturday. That's massive gap nine mm-hmm. this early on and we've got quite a favour I know we we thought a couple of weeks ago we've got a nice favourable set of fixtures but we always know <laughs> Wolves and Palace and Leicester Dave's that laughing. ruined our season last season Dave why are you laughing yeah. no I just said we had a favourable run of oh yeah uh, no we haven't but yeah. I mean we've got on paper home, there's no such thing is Norwich there well, well, December's coming up and we've got like Chelsea Man United got Chelsea Man twice. City yeah. Yeah. in close succession Everton away uh, well I tell you I mean, let's put it this way there's absolutely no doubt at all that we've got the players to beat Leicester. There's no doubt in my mind at all we've got better players than them. But in, in not all positions, but I mean, certainly Telemans would walk into our team, yeah. Vardy would walk I in. think that's who would. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. quite interesting that when we were having a manager chat, players. we didn't talk about Brendan Rodgers because I know... Well, I was going to... Yeah. That's really annoyed me on Twitter because all these people who did, wouldn't, wouldn't have touched him with a barge pole 18 months ago saying yeah, we should have gone for him. You know, come on. Just, I mean... Oh, it annoys me. Oh, no, yeah. But at least be honest with yourselves for crying out loud. I, Nobody like, wanted, him, I like him. I've always liked him. I know no, you most, I've, I've, most Arsenal fans, fans, forum, I know. Most Arsenal fans don't I don't didn't like want him because he's Celtic Liverpool. Yeah. I've never liked him. But no, I think on paper, there are obviously some very good Leicester players, but we shouldn't be frightened of them no. if we know what we're doing. So he's just got in training this week. He's got to set it out. He's got to know exactly what they're doing. The players have got to know exactly what they're doing. And if we do that in our strong formation with Ozil playing well, of course we can beat Leicester. Well, if they know what they're doing, that's what that's we're saying. That's the week. question. Well, I thought that's a big question. We should have asked that a lot earlier. Let's quickly get a, a score prediction. Charlie, I'll start with you. I know you're positive <laughs> about it. We're <laughs> Arsenal. We're going to take it to them. They're going to fear us. I'll what go 2-1 to the Arsenal. 2-1 to the Arsenal. Dave, what do you say? Uh, 3-2 to the Arsenal. Oy, oy. Either way, I take what it. Score saying, win for the There's no way it's only going to be three goals in that Charlie, game. Charlie, what are you going to say? <laughs> I'm saying I really hope it's 2-1 or 3-2. <laughs> really really right. Clean yeah, sweep. Yeah, clean happen. sweep. Well, this has been the Arsenal fan show with Gunners Town. Charlie and Dave Seeger. You can catch us every Monday, 7-8, to 8, right here on Love Sport Radio. Love Sport. Hi, I'm Barry. I'm a retired school bursar from Chingford. I thought I...